This is what my bear looks like after I'm all finished. The hat goes up or down. You could sew it down if you wanted. For this crochet project, I used my 6mm crochet hook as well as my 4mm crochet hook. And I used a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors as well as my clover pom-pom maker. I used 100% cotton yarn. I used a brown color, black color, cream colored, red, and then a sparkle metallic white. We're going to start by making the head and I'm using my brown 100% cotton yarn. You're going to start with a magic circle. Just take your yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your six millimeter crochet hook, go under those two loops around your two middle fingers, go ahead and bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you just take your forefinger and your thumb, grab the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, then let go and pull on the other one. And then close it as much as you can. Don't worry about closing it too tight because we can always close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work. We're going to go into the first stitch in the circle. So here you can see your first stitch. Go into that stitch. We're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. There's one. Going into the same stitch bring up a loop and make your second single crochet. Then you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches and then come back. This is what my work looks like so far. I have 12 stitches all the way around. Now you can close the center of the magic circle if you need to. Just turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end. Now you're going to need a yarn marker. Go ahead and just place, I just use one of my scraps of yarn, and just place your yarn marker right where you left off. Now we're going to make some increase rounds, which means we're going to increase the number of stitches around our circle. Remember right now we have 12, so we're going to increase that number. The first thing that you're going to do is make one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So I'm going to show you one more set. One single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Then go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. You should have ended up with 18 stitches around on that last round. Now go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up. We're going to get ready for the next increase round. For this round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. I'll make one more set with you. One single crochet into the first stitch, 
one single crochet into the second stitch and then two single crochet into the third stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. On that last round you should have had 24 stitches around then go ahead and move your yarn marker up for our next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have finished with 30 stitches on that round. For the next round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the same stitch for the fifth stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around. Then for the last increase round for the head you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the same stitch for the sixth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. After you finish that last increase round then you can take your crochet hook go into the next stitch over yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work You're going to need two of them for the head. The body is made the exact same way except you're going to add one more increase round. For the body you're going to make one more increase round with one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the same stitch for the seventh stitch. Then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You're going to need two for the body as well. The snout is made the same way except you're going to stop when you get to the one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. So that's the last increase round for the snout. So again the snout is made the exact same way except when you get to the increase round where you have one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around and then finish off for the snout. This is what my snout looks like when I'm finished and I left a long loose yarn end for sewing the snout on when I finished off. For the nose I used my four millimeter crochet hook. Go ahead and take your black yarn for the nose and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then you can cinch the loop around the crochet hook. We're going to make a chain. We're going to start with a chain of four. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop, make a single crochet, go into the next stitch for a single crochet, and then you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. and then turn your work as you're making your three single crochet into that last stitch. Now you're on the opposite side. So this is where we made our single crochets. And we're going to work on the opposite side. So you're going to go into the next stitch over on the opposite side. Go behind your loose yarn end. Bring up a loop. Make a single crochet. 
and then in the next stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch on the opposite side. You can go ahead and cut your loose yarn end. Make sure you only cut the loose yarn end. And then finish your three single crochet into that last stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just go into the next stitch over. Yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch, then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. To make the eye, you're going to start with the magic circle. Again, drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. I used my four millimeter crochet hook to make the eyes. Just go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Now you're going to make eight single crochet into the magic circle. So eight single crochet into the magic circle. Then take your forefinger and thumb, hold it at the base of the eight single crochet. You're going to close it the same way. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, turn it so that it's forming a circle. And then you're going to go into that first stitch. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the eye onto your bear. Then you can turn the work over if you need to close it. Just pull on the loose yarn and on the back to close it up. Now you're going to need a little bit of white yarn. I'm using my 100% um, cotton sparkly white yarn. You're going to need two eyes. You can see how I've already made one eye. So this is going to be the right eye facing the bear, the right eye. And then that means that for the other eye, I need to make the white dot on the opposite side. So you just come up the wrong side with your tapestry needle. Make sure you leave enough of the white yarn on the back for tying a knot. And then you just go about two millimeters down. And you can see how you form the white dot. So you want the white dot on the opposite sides. Or if you want them on the same side, it'll look like the bear is looking that direction. So I mean you can do change it however you want to make your eyes. Then you just take and place the eye and sew the eye in place. I have the loose yarn ends on the other side. And then you just sew all around the eye making sure that it's secure and in place. This is how my face looks like so far. And then the back I just trimmed the loose yarn ends. Now you can take and cover those loose yarn ends with the back of the head. Make sure that you have the loose yarn end towards the center and then just line it up so that the angles are equal and then we can sew the edges together. When you're sewing it, leave the front panel 
and the back panel a little bit open beneath the snout. That way we can fit the body into that area and sew it shut around the body. Now you're going to take the body and so the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. Make sure that you have the loose yarn ends or the wrong sides together. And then you can just take and sew all around the edge with your tapestry needle, making sure to grab both the front and the back of the body. And you're going to sew all the way around the edge until it's completely closed. Just take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew the two edges together. So you want to sew the back panel onto the front panel of the head with your tapestry needle. You just go in and out, grabbing both stitches and sewing the edges together. Then you can take the body after you finished sewing the two pieces together and place it right between the front and back panel of the head. And then as you're sewing the head closed, you can sew along the body, attaching the head to the body. Make sure that you have the head straight on the body as you're sewing. You can see how I've sewn the head to the body. And then I'm just continuing around. Now I'm going to sew the head completely closed. For the ear, you're going to make a magic circle again. And I'm using my 4 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to make your slip knot. This time you're going to place 6 single crochet into the magic circle. You're going to go ahead and close up the gap, but this time you're going to keep the work just like this. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and now you're going to work into this next stitch. And you're going to place two single crochet into that next stitch. And then you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch back across. I have two stitches left. In the last stitch, I'm just going to place one single crochet. So in my last stitch, I'm only going to place one single crochet. Now you can add the same color that you had for your snout. Go ahead and hook that yarn, bring it through, chain one, then you can cut the previous colored yarn. Make sure you leave enough loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then go ahead and just tie a knot. Then turn your work, you're going to go into the next stitch over, and then you're going to make two single crochet 
into the same stitch. And then two single crochet into every stitch across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're going to make only one single crochet. And then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to sew this colored end. You only need a little bit because you have the same color. You want to sew it to the ear, to the bear with the same color. So you're going to use brown here to sew the center and then the beige color or whatever color you used for the outer ear to sew this small portion to the bear. Then you just line up the ear on the right side of the head. This is how I have mine lined up. Then just take your tapestry needle and sew the ear to the edge of the bear. Just make sure that you're using the same color yarn as you're sewing it to the bear. So I'll use the beige color here and then the brown color in the center. And then just sew the ear to the bear. Just going in and out and sewing the ear to the edge After you finish sewing the ear to the bear, then you can take and tie a knot on the back. I like to usually go through at least twice. Then you can take and bury the loose yarn end. Just go right through the back head of the bear, making sure you don't go through the front, just through the back, and then just bury your loose yarn end. For the beige colored yarn, or the different colored yarn, I just go right through and bury it under the outer edge of the back of the ear so that the same color will be buried within the same color. So go ahead finish sewing your ear on and burying any loose yarn ends and then come back. For the hat you're going to start with the white colored yarn just fold it over on itself to form a loop. I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make a chain of 40. I'm just going to show you four of them. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 40, and then come back. After you made your chain of 40, Go ahead and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb. Now you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. You're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Just yarn over, go into that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. Now you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. So one double crochet, just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, 
two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. So you're going to finish making one double crochet in every stitch back across. And then come back. This is how your work should look so far. Now you can go ahead and fold it in half. Make sure it's not twisted. You want to form a circle. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into that top stitch of the first chain three that you made. So here you can see I have a chain. Here's the first chain. I'll show you with the tapestry needle. So here you have your first chain, the middle chain, which is the second, and then the third chain. So you're going to go into that top stitch or third chain with your crochet hook. So just take your crochet hook, go into that top stitch, then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Now you can go ahead and chain one, turn your work, take that bottom loose yarn end, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then you're just going to join the bottom. So take that bottom stitch of that first chain three that you made, and join the bottom. So you're just going to tie a knot into that bottom stitch. And that'll join the bottom forming a ring. And then just leave the loose yarn in. We'll bury that later. So you can see how I have a perfect ring for the brim of the hat. You want the right side facing you, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for a single crochet. Just bring up a loop, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, Yarn over and go through all four loops and then chain one. And we completed one trinity stitch. Now you're going to go into the same stitch you just finished. Bring up a loop. Next stitch. Bring up a loop. Next stitch. Bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all four. Chain one and repeat. So you're going to do this all the way around back to your first trinity stitch. I'll make one more with you. So go ahead, finish making your round of trinity stitches and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started. I have one more trinity stitch left. So I'm going to go into the last stitch that I made my trinity stitch, bring up my second loop. Now I'm going into the next stitch. Now here I have two stitches near the end. I'm going to skip one and go to the one right before my chain one on my previous rows trinity stitch. So you want your fourth loop to be in that chain one space of the previous rows trinity stitch and then make your last trinity stitch and before you chain one on that last trinity stitch we're going to change colors so now you can bring in your red yarn bring up a loop and then chain one Then you can take and cut the previous colored yarn. Make sure you leave a long enough loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. 
and then go ahead and just tie a knot Now you're ready to start your round with the red yarn. So I've already, I'm going to make one more chain one. Make sure I have a good chain one space to work in when I come back around. Then I'm going to start by going into the same chain one space that I just finished with and bring up a loop. Go into the next space and bring up a loop and then go into the chain one space of the previous rounds trinity stitch to bring up my fourth loop. Then you can chain one and repeat. So every time you start in the space that you just finished a trinity stitch and then your fourth loop that you bring up should fall into the chain one space of the previous rows trinity stitch. Go ahead and finish repeating this pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. This is how my work looks so far. You can see the beautiful stitch that it creates all the way around. Now I'm making my last stitch to start working in rounds. So I'm going to go into the chain one space that I just finished a trinity stitch, bring up a loop. Next stitch, bring up a loop. And then that should bring me to the chain one space of the previous rounds trinity stitch. To bring up my fourth loop and make my trinity stitch. And then you just keep repeating. So each of my fourth loops will fall on the previous rounds Trinity stitch. And then you're going to continue repeating this pattern until you've completed seven rounds. So seven rounds of Trinity stitches and then come back. I finished seven rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can take a yarn marker, place it right where you left off. We're going to make one round of decrease trinity stitches. So you're going to go back into the same stitch that you just finished your trinity stitch just like you did before. You're going to bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch which is the chain one space of the previous rounds trinity stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all four for a decrease stitch. Now you are not going to chain one, so no chain one. You're going to go into the same stitch that you just finished and bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through all four for a decrease. No chain one. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And so what you're doing is without your chain one, you're decreasing the number of stitches for this round. So go ahead, finish repeating this pattern all the way around without a chain one, and then come back. Now I'm back to my yarn marker. This is what my work looks like so far. Now you can move your yarn marker up to where you left off. You're going to take your crochet hook, go into the stitch, the same stitch that you just finished your trinity stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, next stitch, bring up a loop, then yarn over and go through all four, and then chain one. So now you're going to make your trinity stitches with a chain one all the way around. And you're going to continue making regular trinity stitches with the chain one for four rounds and then come back. I just finished four rounds, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Actually, I made one more, five rounds. 
So you can make four to five rounds, however long that you want the length of your Santa hat. Then go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And you're going to make a decrease round. So you're going to go into the same stitch that you just finished, your last Trinity stitch. And just like you did your last decrease round, you're going to bring up your four loops. Then yarn over and go through all four, but no chain one. And then just repeat all the way around for just one round. So no chain one, exactly the same, but just no chain one. And then repeat this all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then you can go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And this time you're going to make two rounds of trin regular Trinity stitches. So two rounds of a regular Trinity stitch, which means that you're going to make your chain one. And then repeat all the way around until you've completed two rounds. And then come back. So I finished two rounds of Trinity regu regular Trinity stitches with a, ch a chain of one. Now I'm going to slip stitch my top of my hat closed. So you're going to take and skip the next stitch, go into the next stitch, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around until you've closed the top of the hat. And then once the top of the hat is closed, then you can finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your hat. Then you just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, and then just bring it right down the center of the hat into the wrong side of the hat. And then you can turn your hat inside out. Go ahead and take your tapestry needle and you're going to bury any of your loose yarn ends. To do that, you just take and weave your tapestry needle through the inside of the hat. And I like to go a couple of different directions and just weave it right through the inside of the hat. So go ahead, bury any of your loose yarn ends and then come back. For the pom-pom, I used my Clover pom-pom maker. It makes it really easy to make your pom-pom and this device just opens up in the center to start with, you just take whatever yarn you're using for the pom-pom and then take it and place it along the side and then just wrap it around covering one of the arches. Then when you're finished with your pom-pom, you just take and remove the two edges and then you have a cute little pom-pom that I'm going to place onto my hat. With the right side facing out, I just take and place the pom-pom on the tip of the hat. And then you can tie a knot on the inside. This hat can work on one of your jelly jars. So it would be a cute gift. You just tie a ribbon right around the jelly jar. This hat will also work on your Santa Claus doll. This is what it looks like with a cute little bow around the bottom of it. If you're using your Santa hat for the bear, then you would just take and position the hat in place and then just sew it along the curve of the head and line it up so that the eye still shows. Take the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle, start from the back, 
and then sew the hat in place, making sure that on the back that you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then you just take and sew the hat in place. This is what my hat looks like after I've sewn it on. You can see how you could turn the hat down so that it droops over if you wanted. For the paws, I'm using my six millimeter crochet hook. You're gonna start with whatever color you used for your snout. You're gonna start with the magic circle. You're gonna start with your slip knot and then make six single crochet into the magic circle. Just like we did before. Then go ahead and close up the magic circle. Then you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 and then come back. Then you can go ahead and turn it over, pull on that loose yarn end to close the center of your magic circle. Then just take your loose yarn end or yarn marker, place it right where you left off. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around. And you're going to do that for three rounds. One, two, three. Then just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on your hook. Go ahead and get your brown colored yarn. And then you're going to hook the brown colored yarn and bring it through. Make sure you leave enough loose yarn end for tying a knot, and then just chain one. Then you can turn your work and cut your previous colored yarn. Go ahead and tie a knot. Then you're just going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet, and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around and then complete three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew onto your bear. And you're going to need four of these. Then you can go ahead and sew the arms on. And how I sewed mine about two stitches away from the head. Then I just took and grabbed a stitch on the body and just go through the stitch on the body and then the stitch on the hand and sew it in place. all the way to the end. Then once you have the end sewn in place, then you can go through to the back and then do the same thing on the back side. and then just tie a knot and bury your loose yarn end on the back. This is what mine looks like with all four, the two legs and the two arms sewn in place. And this is what it looks like on the back. To make the present, I used my red yarn, just folded it over on itself to form a loop, and I took my six millimeter crochet hook, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have a chain of eight. Then you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb and then make a chain of three. One, two, three. That counts as your first double crochet for the next row. Then you're going to yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding, and bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. And then come back. Then, when you've reached the end, go ahead and chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. Now you're going to go into the next stitch over, so it's not this stitch at the base of your chain three, it's the next stitch over, and just make a double crochet. And then you're going to make a double crochet into every stitch back across. Make sure that you grab the last double crochet. You should have nine stitches. So don't forget that last double crochet. Then you're just going to chain three again and keep repeating this pattern. One double crochet into every stitch across. And each row should have a total of nine stitches. Then go ahead and finish six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six. When you're finished with six rows of one double crochet in every stitch, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the rectangle in half. Then you can take the long end that you left for sewing and put it onto your tapestry needle and just sew all of the ends closed. So just fold it in half and then sew it closed on all edges. This is what mine looks like after I've finished sewing it in half. Now you're going to take your white yarn and fold it over to form a loop. And I'm still using my 6 millimeter crochet hook. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop to form a slip knot, and then you're going to make a chain. Make a chain of 60 and then go ahead and finish off. Bring enough yarn through to sew the chain in place on the present. Then I just took the shorter loose yarn end and put it right at the bottom of the present. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew a stripe down the center, sew that in place. For now, I'm just going to take the small loose yarn end and sew that together until I have it in place. Then I'm going to take, fold it up, and then around. And then I'm going to take I'm actually going to go ahead and clip this long end that I left for sewing. I'm going to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end on the end there. That way I can use this to sew my work in place. So now I can take and just sew it in place. 
then after I formed the cross on both sides of the present, then I'm going to take and fold the top portion into two loops. And then sew that in place. Then I have the little bit left over from the bow. I'm going to place that on the hand and then sew, finish sewing the bow in place to the hand of the bear. And then tie a knot on the back and then bury my loose yarn ends. Make another chain of 60 with your 6 millimeter crochet hook with your red yarn for the bow on the bear. Take each end and just trim it leaving about a centimeter of loose yarn end on both sides. Place your chain so that the center is directly under the head of the bear. Then take your red colored yarn onto your tapestry needle and then come up from the wrong side of the bear from the back side. Make sure you leave enough yarn on the back for tying a knot and then just put a couple of stitches through the center. Make sure that you tie a knot onto the back. Then you can just take, once it's sewn in place, you can take and tie a knot and then tie a bow. I went ahead and sewed down my bow on the edges only and then on the back this is what the back looks like.